Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Sejo Love. Here back to recap another good edition of AW Dynamite. Fun episode recapping on April 27, 2022. Saw some interesting matches. Look forward on the show and an FTR collision for the for a spot rather in the Owen Hart Cup tournament. We had a solid match between Lance Archer and Wardlow. Wasn't a lot, but was very good for time given. The latter match between Scorpio Sky and uh, Sammy Guevara. But before I get into the whole gist of the review, I do have to say that thoughts are with the current AW World Champion, Heyman Adam Page. He tweeted out that due to COVID protocol, he would, well, he was not on the show tonight, but it was confirmed that he will defend the AEW World Championship versus CM Punk at Double or Nothing, May 29th, what should be a hell of a match to conclude in Vegas, and so again, hopes to a speedy recovery for our hangman, hopefully nothing major, he has had some solid matches since becoming AEW World Champion. In November, at Full Gear, you know, two great matches with Cole, two great matches with Brian, the Tex Death match with Archer, had a good match with Dante Martin as well. But yeah, Hangman, just hope that it's nothing major and we see him back as quick as next week for Dynamite. Also, so it was announced for next week. We'll get two surprising appearances. Well, one I would say is more of a surprise than the other. But next week it will be... Diana Perazzo, Diana Perazzo, one of the best women's wrestlers in all in the whole world. Diana Perazzo, the current Ring of Honor Women's Champion. She up uh, facing the interim. Ring of Honor Women's Champion Mercedes Martinez and a unification bout next week on Dynamite. Now, for those who watch or listen to Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor weeks ago, you'll know that. It was Mercedes Martinez for Swole Nightingale in an interim, interim women's championship belt. Of course, it was originally scheduled to be Perrazzo and Nightingale, but due to, I believe, that she was booked on the same night for Impact, that she... It was booked as a interim women's championship belt between 
Perazzo, Nightingale, ultimately, or excuse me, Martinez, but ultimately Martinez got the win. And next week should be an interesting one. And Diana Perazzo's AW debut. Because, well, Jonathan Gresham and Diana Perazzo. So far only. And, of course, William Utah, but he's not really Ring of Honor. But Jonathan Gresham and Diana Perazzo, the only two champions, real Ring of Honor champions, to appear on AEW. Now, W. Morrissey, a.k.a. the former big cast of WWE. Big cast or W. Morrissey, whichever you want to call him. Called by MJF tonight after Wardlow's match with Lance Archer. As another hired gun for our next week to take out Wardlow. Now, Morrissey, you know, has been mostly on impact the last couple of years since his release from WWE. He has improved, he's gotten in better shape. You know, I've seen his matches with A. Edwards. With Moose, he has improved. He has improved. And, you know, him for Swarlow next week, that's going to be. I mean, him, Wardlow for his Archer was good tonight. So I imagine this match is only going to be very good as well. But. Nonetheless, thank you for joining me. If you're new to the podcast, if you want to see more pro wrestling reviews on the channel, find those, click those on the subscription down in the corner. Take you to your own page. You can also find out when I post my videos right then and there. So you get the notifications. But thank you all. And now let's get into the review, shall we? To open the show, we had FTR for FTR, as in Dax Harwood for Cash Wheeler, Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, and Triple A Tag Team Champions collide for a spot in the Own Heart Cup tournament. This was fun. It was just pretty much an old school wrestling match, you know, back and forth. Not really too many big spots because we know how old school FTR is. They are an old school tag team. They're basically an 80s, 90s tag team in 2022. But this was fun. Back and forth. Go figure. They're tag team partners. So they should know each other very well. But ultimately did not disappoint. I mean... It was good that they came out together. I do like that they came out together. And, you know, with tag team partners, we usually see on WWE or somewhere else where a tag team partner comes out by himself and then 
the other comes out with the same music. And it's just a little strange. So I'm glad that they had their own entrance. I'll say that. But yeah, this was very fun. You know, pretty much the first half of the match was just back and forth train, chain wrestling, you know, hit toss counters, you know, back and forth, you know, stride for stride. And then all of a sudden, Dax hits a superplex out of the corner. And, you know, went for a diving headbutt, missed. More back and forth. Cash hits a hurricane Rana. Roll for a near fall. When match, Dex hits his rebound powerbomb for a two count. Cash. Now, also of no CM Punk was on commentary. CM Punk was on commentary. So, provide some good insight despite, you know, his feud with MJF. So, Cash is dangerous looking pile driver for a two count. So, Cash went for top row back suplex, but... Dax countered hit or countered to a crossbody midair for two count. Also of note, they wore Bret Hart inspired tights. Bret Hart inspired tights. So in the rumor mill of that Bret Hart has quietly Signed a new deal with WWE. That's a little interesting. That's a little interesting, you know, for FTR to have Bret Hart inspired tights, you know. Teases are still there. He may still be there. We don't know. Nothing's really official has been made, but we'll see. So they spilled out to the outside and Cash was holding his leg or knee. And now this is kind of the vocal point for the end of the match. So they got back in the ring both at nine. So Dax went to target the knee of his partner Cash. But so he went for a sharpshooter, hence more Bret Hart. Well, tease there. So he went for a sharpshooter, but his partner is waving him off, telling him don't do it. And Dax was having second thoughts. And then after some. You know, Cash tried to counter, and then he finally rolled up Cash, or excuse me, Dax, and then Dax and Cash, they just rolled over, and then finally Dax stepped up, stacked up Cash, one, two, three, and Dax Harwood. Advances and qualifies for the Owen Hart Cup tournament. So currently, Samoa Joe, Kyle Riley, Al Cole, and Dax Harwood. That's a solid four so far. And next week, it's going to be Bobby Fish versus Jeff Hardy. For another interesting on heart cut qualifier, so there's that. So I mentioned CM Punk. So they confirmed 
they add the graphic up. That at double or nothing. It'll be CM Punk for Hangman for the AEW World Championship. One on one. Mano y mano. In Vegas. Good. That's first time in three years. AEW will be back in Las Vegas for double or nothing. Because last year it was in a good house in Dallas Place, but it wasn't, you know, Vegas. So Punk said a quick promo. I imagine he would have said something with Hangman, but of course he was not there. So Sam Punk quickly said, well, congrats to FTR. I held the match. He told the fans that, you know, they're the reason why he came back and why he's still able to do what he's able to do. And that if it wasn't for them, he wouldn't return after seven years. If it wasn't for them, he wouldn't be going to double or nothing. And he told Hangman hey he likes him, but he's going to try and keep going until the wheels fall off. You know, I like Hangman, hey but I feel like at double or nothing, we're going to have a new AEW world champion in CM Punk. That's just my opinion. So we got the Blackpool Combat Club. Brian Danielson. Will Utah. Who, by the way, I did not know. I mean, he was from Philly. I mean, again, I probably heard, heard it, but I didn't get much mention or didn't get much Cause he doesn't have a lot of entrances. He doesn't have a lot of entrances. But I mean, coming with being in the Blackpool Combat Club now, he's going to have a lot more. But I did not know he's from Philly. And he got a great reaction tonight in Philly. So, that was good for him. As he, Moxley, and Brian face the factory, QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, and Nick Camarado in a trios match. This was pretty much domination from the get go. You know, I do like seeing that trio offense from. Moxley, Utah, and Brian in the middle of the ring. You know, it's just great visual. You know, Moxley's doing one thing. Utah's doing another, and Brian as well. It's just great visual. And, you know, I'm not sure what's holding AEW back as far as the trios titles are concerned. But you can already tell. And I've already known that these guys, that triangle who made their return tonight and the House of Black are going to be very much tying into that Trio's title scene. Tony Storm, Jamie Ader. Brett Baker backstage with Tony Schiavone. You know, Brett Baker had a new Brett Baker shirt on, which looked very cool, I will say. I imagine if that's on AW Shop or something, that's going to sell. Cool shirt, but. So, 
Again, they agree to no physicality. And then Tony Storm said, well, allow me to introduce you to a friend of my own. And walks Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho. So she referenced Owen Hart because she's also in the Owen Hart tournament. Enough is enough and it's time for a change. And she declared that maybe they fight right now. So then... Brett retreated along with Jamie Hader and said, nope, no physicality, and we'll take a tour of your home and catering. So, for the women who have qualified for the tournament, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And plus... More Ruby Soho. More Ruby Soho. She's too talented. I mean, I'm glad she's in this tournament because she's been off TV for too long. And I mean, I get it. You know, with the way she debuted, going to face for the world title, and then in the TBS title tournament, losing to Jake Cargill, you know, once he's hard up, the only way is go to go is down. And but you know, good to see Ruby Soul more on TV. Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Christian Cage. So they were talking about. Jungle Boy, him losing against Kyle Riley in the Owen Hart Cup qualifier last week. Christian Cage showed that you don't sound like, well, Jungle Boy sounded dejected and Christian Cage said, well, you don't sound like a sore loser. You just sound like a loser. So that provided a pop and you know but Christian was like yeah I can bet you can turn this thing around you guys can and he opened out a challenge to any team in top five for challenge so in walked Ricky Sarks and Powerhouse Hobbs you know, and Sark said, anytime, anywhere, die my rampage, YouTube, wherever it is, Team Taz versus Jungle Boy and Lich Source, I tell you, that's going to be fun. But also, you know, there were talks for many weeks about possibly. Christian Cage turning heel on Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus and for whatever reason, that did not happen. Now, I can already see the wheels are turning and are in motion for Christian Cage to possibly turn heel in the future and toss then the tag team titles, but... Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus against Team Taz. Sign me up. So then we got the big guns matchup. Lance Archer and Warlow. This was good. Short match, but so was fun for what it was worth. So... Actually, one sec. I gotta turn off the fan. It's kind of cold in my room. Shh. 
All right, there's that. But so Lance Archer came out, made his entrance. There were two security guards on the stage. Funny stuff. So Archer made his way into the ring. And then one we'll say about Archer. It seems like they're moving away from Dan Lambert being with Archer and keeping Jake Roberts with Lance Archer. I guess they kind of thought, well, if the reactions are working for Lambert and basically turning him and Scorpius Sky babyface, then perhaps that's probably not going to work for Lance Archer. I don't know if that's just thought. So we hear NJF's music. Him and Sean Spears are in the skybox eating popcorn. And NJF says, in the NJF way, Oh, you guys are booing? Well, then he tells Spears, you know, Spears, guess what? Philadelphia women use for their birth control. And then Spears says, I don't know what. And then NJF says, their personalities. So, NJF and MJF, gotta love it. So, he said, once again, that Wardlow will come out to no music. And he said to everyone, shut up. So out came Wardlow. No music, no lights. Handcuffed, escorted by security guards. I mean, he doesn't need music because... The guy is incredibly over. And it's good to see. I will say that I'm all nervous that if because Wardlow is from oh, Cleveland. And we know Johnny Gargano is from Cleveland. So if, per se, the time comes when, because Johnny Gargano, I think, when, because I think Candice LeRae gave birth to their child. So I think when the time comes that Johnny will be free to wrestle again, I'm a little nervous about Gargano now being in AEW because both Gargano and Wardlow are from Cleveland. That's just not, although Gargano works great as both a heel and a babyface. So there's that. But anyway, Wardlow made his entrance and it was just... Big man collision from there. So, one of the security guards had a tough time trying to get the handcuffs off of Wardlow. So then while he's getting them off, Archer from the ring apron hits a senton which takes out both Wardlow and the security guards to the outside. Um, takes them all out. And then the action starts, so. Wardlow was, showed off his agility in this match, you know. Jumping out of the way of Archer's attacks, you know. Very mobile, what, because we know how good his moveset is, but there's that, so. 
they were fighting on the top rope. And it looked like Archer was going for a superplex. But, or excuse me, so. Getting out of myself. So Archer landed his old school, like top rope moonsault on Wardlow. Looks like he came down a bit high on Wardlow. Maybe his knee, one of his knees. Had contact with Wardlow's head. He was kind of favoring it from the rest of the match. Like he was deemed. But. There's a thought there. Because. Archer's a tall guy. He's a big guy. So. There's that. And. Archer had chokes on for a near fall. Archer then went for the blackout. He hit it. And I was a little curious because with the way Wardlow is holding his head, perhaps they may be calling an audible. But no, so Archer goes in for the pin, but Wardlow counters into the cru crucifix pin at two, so but only for a near fall, so he almost caught Archer there. So, and as I mentioned, you know, fighting on top row, but Wardlow fights fights off with some headbutts. So, I mean, he's dinged and he uses his head, but oh well. So. Archer is sent down to the mat. Wardlow, and he's 267, 270, hits a swanton bomb from the top rope. To Archer, he, he looked like he didn't get all of it, but he's got some of it. And he got for a near fall. And then finally he hit four power bombs to power bomb Symphony. One, two, three, and Warlow gets his victory over Lance Archer. Much to MJF's demise. Wardlow stands tall. And a good big man matchup. The Jericho Appreciation Society. They're out there. There was a table set up in the middle of the ring with water balls and microphones. So it looked like they were going to have a sit down, scheduled sit down with. Kingston sent Howard T's. That was not the case. So they called out Kingston sent Howard T's. And. Kingston. So Jericho demanded an apology. For what happened last week. And instead, he got a two-finger salute from Santana and Ortiz. Kingston said he's had with this, you know, he's done with all these theatrics, you know, talking. And says they just want to fight. So let's get this. And he doesn't care that it's five on three. And Jericho said, that's a problem. You guys are too dumb to understand. It's five on three. 
and said that they'll take him out one by one. And that and said they're gonna put a hit on everyone. It, whether it's on Kingston, Santana Ortiz. And then so Garcia was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You can't hit us. And then Jericho was like, well, what are you going to do? Hit me. And then Tony Khan, fire you. And get yourself fired from another company. And he said, this is your last chance. So then. Jericho sat down in that chair. And boy, did Kingston have some harsh realization and some words for Jericho. So, Kingston said, so coming from where I'm from, you know, what it hit means that you got to be ready to put someone in the ground. And that's what we're prepared to do. And he said, are you guys? I don't think you are. And, you know, what you can't help but love about Kingston is that everything he says and does feels real. And this emotion Kingston had in Jericho's face just was fun. And they stormed off and almost look of fear or intimidation in Jericho's eyes. That was just great sword telling to the bone. I feel like we're going to get an extra tag team and whether it's Butcher and Blade, whether it's well, I mean, I thought it could potentially be the Lucha Brothers, but with what happened later in the show, I was wrong. So, I mean, who knows, but it could be a five on five. Who, I mean, with double or nothing next month, maybe they do another Sam Sampede match. I'm not saying they need to, but I mean, they've done... Two same stampedes at double or nothing the last two years. Maybe it's blood guts. It's it's intriguing to see how it goes for the suit because again we've seen Kingston Santana Ortiz square up against everyone in this faction. So where they go from here, we'll see. No love in this street fight. Surya D for Sakoshida. Philly street fight. You know. AW's had some real brutal women's no DQ matches. I mean, last year with Brett Baker and Hikaru Shida and that Lights Out match. And then the tag team match in the fall or the winter with AJ Ty Conti versus Penelope Ford and the Bunny. That was brutal as well. This match wasn't as brutal as those. I mean, I don't know why this match felt a little bit, I mean, understandable, but felt not quite what it could be, but... It was okay. It was okay. 
So Shia went for a knee strike on D, but Deep held up the chair, blocked the strike, and again, the sorry, she does knee throughout the match. So, Deep was on the outside, kind of reeling. She got something from underneath the ring. She went for the advantage, but Got some powder in her eyes. Apparently in the bag was powder, which she got thrown in her eyes. And that blinded her for a good portion of the match. So... Was a kendo stick attack... Um, she had got some water from someone on the outside, washed her eyes out. She hit avalanche falcon arrow on the, off the top row for near fall. Deep hit the deep tox on a chair on Shia. I thought it was going to be the win, but for near fall. Serena D then pounded his knee on the chair more times. Walked in a Texas clover leaf. Texas clover leaf. Haven't seen that in a while. On to Sheeta. Sheeta tapped out. And D wins. We saw in the back. Thunder Rosa gave her nod of approval as she was watching the match. Probably hinting Serena Deep versus Thunder Rosa for the AWN Championship at double nothing. Interesting. You know, I've been wondering why. Sony Deeb has not been qualified for the Own Heart Cup tournament. She got something else in her eye. Going for the AWN Championship. Should be fun. MJF, Sean Spears, they were backstage with Lexi Nair, DP's daughter, and shoot her off. You know, so. And Jeff got his phone and said to a big man, yo, hey, you want to make six figures for one match? And they hung up the phone. He said, well, Wardlow, so next week, how do you feel about face someone that's bigger, stronger, and taller than you? And you can't Teach that. Big Cass or W. Morrissey next week versus Warlow. That'll be interesting. Very interesting. The House of Black. They're out there. Fuego del Sol. He was just laid out on. The Sage area. Buddy Matthews and Brody King, they held him up. And it looked like Malachi Black was about to unmask Fuego del Sol. And then we heard someone in the ring in a Alex. Abrahantes like robe, which you could kind of tell it wasn't going to be Alex Abrahantes, but we heard his voice. 
and they're like they took this time to now blindside them. So House of Black storm to the ring. We hear Penta Os Oscuro's music. He comes out to stage. Then Pac makes his return. He's on the stage. Then we see Alex Abarhantes comes out to stage. And then who we see on this guy's Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix. He's back. Phoenix, we have not seen since January. A couple of months ago, since he dislocated his shoulder. Brutal fashion against Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. He is back. And great to see, you know, him first Buddy Matthews. We saw a little tease. Buddy Matthews versus Penta. Buddy Matthews versus Phoenix and Pat. Sign me up. I mean, the match here are going to be great. Just great. Swerve Strickland. Swerve will face Darby Allen on Friday's Rampage in Owen Hart Cup qualifying match. Very interesting. Very, they had a bit of a face-off backstage. Should be a fun match. Fun match to look forward to. I predict Darby to advance. Just I love Swerve, but I don't see him winning over Darby. Then we got the undisputed elite Red Dragon, Apple, the Young Bucks. Came out separately. They are out there versus the Varsity Blondes, Brock Anderson, Lee Johnson, and Dante Martin. This is the second tag team match we've seen with Dante Martin without his brother. And they're just kind of curious on Darius Martin's help. Because he did make his return for a couple weeks for a couple matches and just curious to see if he's not healthy, like not healthy. And it's just strange, you know, comes back for a couple matches and now he's not there with his brother. Strange. Short but sweet, you know, kind of throwaway match. Topes by John Lee Johnson and, you know, Dante Martin. Ultimately, the elite one with a four way BT trigger. Adam Cole hit the boom. One, two, three. Neon Speed Elite get the victory over Varsity Bond, Sante Martin, Brock Anderson, and Lee Johnson. Now I will say I'm a bit I was a bit disappointed. A bit disappointed. Because well I understand it, but I was a bit disappointed that only saw Arn Anderson in their corner because Julia Hart, we know she's with Lee Johnson and we know she's technically a part of the Varsity Blondes, but you know, she's going over a little bit of a character change that's just a little. Miss out, m miss out pretty much. 
more matches now for for Rampage. So we got Samoa Joe versus Trent Barrett, which should be a good match for the ROH TV title. Trios women's match: Jade Cargo, Red Velvet, Kara Hogan. They're facing Trisha Dora, Sky Blue, and Will Nightingale. You know, kind of throwing a match, but I have not seen Adora care to see how she goes. But yeah, some match lined up. And then next week, Jeff Hardy for Bobby Fish on Heart Cut Qualifier. And Deanna Perrazzo, again, I mentioned for Mercedes Martinez next week. Interesting. Main events. Sammy Guevara for Scorpio Sky. One match for the TNT title. The TNT title has taken a bit of a backseat. It's been kind of... One sec here, one sec. I gotta fix something. All right, sorry about that, folks, but yeah, the as I was mentioning, the TNT title has taken, you know, Scorpio Sky won here. This was a good match, but the TNT title is feeling less important. I mean, again, I mentioned a good match here, but Cody Rhodes, when you look at the first couple TNT champions, you know, we had Cody Rhodes, his first reign when he beat Archer at Double or nothing, 2020. You know, Brody Lee, and then Cody again, but Cody, Darby Allen, and Miro, and We've seen that, you know, Darby what has been a bigger star. Miro brought that title to great lengths. He's shown to be a main event player when he comes back. Broly, I'm sure that if he was still with us, he'd be in the main event discussion based on how he also during that reign brought the dark or to good lengths. But I mean they risen with the title. Also bringing it there. Sammy Guevara when he beat Miro was a great moment. I mean, Sammy is great. 
Sammy's great. It's just, you know, this feud and, you know, the TNT title and the way his his relationship with Ty Conti, all these ingredients is keeping him from where he should be. Because, I mean, those guys I just mentioned are bigger than where they were. And could easily be in discussion for a future world title reign. Sammy Guevara, I just mentioned, and Scorpio Sky, we know he's good in the ring. We know he's doing his work to improve on the mic and etc. But I don't think it's done really any favors for the TNT title. It just hasn't. And you think of where Andrade was versus Sammy Guevara for the TNT title and Eddie Kingston. I mean, it's just... Ay, yeah, yeah. But yeah, this match was good. So, the spot of the match between Cody Rhodes and Sammy Guevara, their ladder match, was where Sammy leaped from a ladder to do a cutter to Cody off another ladder. This time, so, Sammy went for the same spot, but instead, when he leaped from the ladder, Scorpius guy caught him in midair and delivered a cutter of his own midair off the ladder he was on. So, good stuff there. Actually, before, so, Sky had the ladder bring it to ring. Sammy hit Tope to the outside. Then later in the match, out came a barbed wire wrapped ladder from out from underneath the ring. And Sammy Guevara hit a Spanish slide. Standing Spanish slide to Scorpio Sky onto his barbed wire wrapped ladder, which had to have sucked. There, so Paige Van Zandt appeared. You know, she and Ty Conti had a scuffle. And, you know, there was a spot, so. Ty Conti was on the back of Scorpio Sky, and he was climbing up the ladder. Paige Van Zandt, she was on the back of Sammy Guevara. And he's climbing up the ladder. So there was little scuffles at the top of the ladder. It was just different, I would say. I've never seen that before, but just different. So finishing match came, so they both fell. They both hit each other with roundhouse kicks, knocking them to the floor. So, there was the tall ladder in the middle of the ring. The barbed wire wrapped ladder was hanging on to the top rope at a weird angle in the ring. So, I was like, okay. 
So Sky and Guevara, they were exchanging at the top of the ladder. And then Sammy Guevara, he was dumped off the top of the ladder onto the angled barbed wire wrapped ladder. So he was down. And then so Sky went for the title. I thought that was it, but no. Sammy springboarded off the top rope to the ladder. But then you shoved off again from the top of the ladder. Sky goes up, unhooks the title, and Scorpio Sky is a two time team to champion. I mean, good moment for him. The crowd was joyous for Scorpio Sky. Of course, they just want nothing to do with Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. Those theatrics, but good for Sky, but you know, the TNT title is less than two years old, and we already have because the first events was that. Or the first match was at Double or Nothing 2020. Less than two years old. And we already have three multiple time champions. You know, Cody Rhodes. Multiple time champion. Sammy Guevara. Multiple time champion. And now. Scorpio Sky. Multiple time champion. It's just. They got to fix it. They they got to fix it. They got plenty in the mid card to make for some great matches. I mean, I think really two options for Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. I mean, they either got to turn heel or they got to go away for a while. It's just, you know, them continuing this role with them to this feud is not going to work. And we know they're going to have a mixed tag team match with Paige fans. And it just, it was one of the stipulations for this match. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, nonetheless, was a fun episode of Dynamite. Um, good stuff lined up for Rampage. And next week for Dynamite, which is going to be fun packed. But, yeah. Nonetheless, thank you for joining me on the podcast. If you like this video... Be sure to click a thumbs up and be sure to click the description as well in the corner. Find more videos on the channel. See you guys back here on Saturday for AEW Rampage review. And then next week, obviously, with Dynamite again. But be safe. I made Joe to love getting out of here. Peace.